This is Doug DeMuro, and today we are going to talk about rare cars that you would never notice in traffic. Now, a lot of rare cars you would notice in traffic. You see a Ferrari F40, you go, oh my god, it's a Ferrari F40. But many rare cars, they just blend in, even though they are insanely rare. This is one of my very favorite topics, rare, normal cars. So today I'm going to go through some of my favorites. <laughs> Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era. We've had some great sales recently on Cars and Bids, including this Mercedes 560 SEL gorgeous W126 sold for almost $30,000. This Saab 95 Aero from the final model year brought almost $16,000. And this fantastic Porsche 911 Carrera S 997.2 brought almost $56,000. If you're looking to sell your cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. And if you're looking to buy a cool car from the 1980s and up, check out Cars and Bids with daily auction and great selection at carsandbids.com. Okay, so I have picked a few rare cars here that you may see and encounter in traffic, but unless you really knew, you wouldn't know that they're special. I'm gonna go through why each one is so rare, usually because it was a terrible failure. But anyway, let's get started with the 2005 to 2009 Buick Terraza. This was a minivan that was made by General Motors in the mid 2000s. And there were more popular versions. The Chevrolet Uplander was sort of a regular version. And then there was the Pontiac Montana SV6. It was supposed to be like a sportier version. There was also one called the Saturn Relay. But then the Buick Terraza was the luxury version. They managed to sell about 40,000 of these from 2005 to 2007, three model years. Now, for context, Honda Odyssey during that same period sold 175,000 each year. <laughs> So Honda sold about 525,000 Odysseys over this period. Buick sold 40,000 Terrazas. You never see these on the road anymore, but it was the kind of the last gasp of the luxury brand minivan here in the United States. They were not good vehicles. They were not purchased by many people and adding fuel to the fire, they are unreliable. So seeing one on the road today is a very special thing. For me, it's like once or twice a year and I take a picture whenever I see one. Okay, next up, another rare car you might not notice unless you really know what to look for. 8 to 9 ish Chevy HHR SS panel van. I did a review on one of these, but this car is a really special and unusual vehicle. Basically, Chevy HHR, which is a fairly standard retro looking hatchback in the 2000s, they did an SS version with a turbo four cylinder made about 260 horsepower, and then they also did a panel van version, and then you could get both an SS with the panel van. And I did a review of this car and talked about how special and rare it is. And ever since then, people on Twitter send me images of regular HHR panel vans and say, look, I saw one. No, the HHR panel was not all that rare. The HHR SS was not all that rare, but the HHR SS panel, that was the incredibly rare car. I'm told they only made a few hundred of these total. And it really is like a cargo van with a high performance engine, alloy wheels, sport suspension, boost gauge, all that stuff. Absolutely ridiculous car. General Motors made a lot of bizarre decisions at this time, right before bankruptcy. And I'm thrilled they made this bizarre decision. Very, very special car. I'm thrilled I had the chance just to review one a couple years ago. Okay, next up, rare car you might not notice in traffic, 2009 Kia Borrego. This was Kia's attempt at a full-size SUV, and it offered a V8. Most people don't know this. They think the K900 luxury sedan is the only Kia that ever had a V8. No, there was a V8 Kia SUV. Timing was horrible. Came out just as the recession was setting in, and they pulled it from the market after one model year, 09 only. They sold 23,000 of these total. By comparison, that year, the Chevy Tahoe sold 75,000 units just in that one year. So the Tahoe outsold it three to one, almost four to one, just in that model year. And of course, Tahoe has been selling for years and years. So Borrego is not common, and the V8 versions are even rarer. Now, the interesting thing here is the Borrego was also sold as the Kia Mojave overseas in the Middle East. And I think it's still being sold there. Last I checked, as the Kia Mojave in the Middle East. The Telluride may have finally replaced it, but it was sold for years there. But in the States, we got it for one model year. They're very, very rare vehicles. You almost never see them on the road. 
Okay, next up, rare car you wouldn't notice if you saw one. How about the 1991 to 94 Mazda Navajo? A lot of people don't know this car existed. When the Ford Explorer first came out, Ford had a huge stake in Mazda. And so they decided to give Mazda a version of the Ford Explorer, and that was the Navajo. They only sold a two-door Mazda Navajo, whereas the Ford Explorer was a four-door or a two-door. They gave the Navajo only the two-door. They didn't want it to be as good as the Explorer. But there was a Mazda SUV that was a twin of the Ford Explorer. They only sold about 40,000 of these from 91 to 94, so four model years. And obviously, that was 30 years ago. These things basically don't exist anymore. But the next time you encounter an early two-door Ford Explorer, take a look at the badges. You might be actually looking at the ultra-rare Mazda version most people don't even remember. Okay, next up, here's a fantastic rare car that most people would never notice in traffic, but was incredibly uncommon. The 2014 to 2016. 17 Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric Drive. That's what they called it from 14 to 16, and then in 17 they renamed it the B250E. But regardless, it was a Mercedes-Benz B-Class that was all electric. And here in the United States, the only way to get a B-Class was this electric version. Amazingly, Mercedes sold the B-Class in Canada with a gas engine, and I see them here and there. Uh, and obviously they were very popular in Europe, but in the States, only sold from 14 to 17, only electric, and they only sold 4,100 of them for those four years. By comparison, the Chevy Volt during that time period was selling 25,000 units a year. So over four years, they'd sell 100,000 volts Mercedes sold 4,100 electric B-Classes. Now, part of the problem was the B-Class electric was not available nationally. It was only available in certain states that required that automakers sell an electric car to meet regulations. And so Mercedes-Benz kind of brought that to market. It was an easy, quick thing to kind of re-engineer and sell it. But they're very, very rare. You see them sometimes in California, a couple East, East Coast states also. Uh, but that was the Mercedes B-Class electric drive. Very bizarre vehicle. Okay, next one. Here is a fantastic fantastic example of a rare car you might not notice in traffic, but is incredibly rare, the Saab 94X. So right before Saab completely went under, you know, General Motors owned them, and GM was trying to revitalize Saab in a typical GM fashion. They had created like Saab versions of the Chevy Trailblazer and the Subaru Impreza because GM also had a stake at Subaru. It was just, a, it was a lot of bad sharing going on. But the very last car that, that Saab made was an SUV called the 94X, and it was built alongside the Cadillac SRX in Mexico. And the SRX was the popular Cadillac midsize SUV and the 9.4X is going to be Saab. And there was actually a lot of distinction between these cars. The Saab doesn't look anything like the Cadillac, and it was a good vehicle. But the way that this all worked was General Motors was trying to unload Saab, and the moment it became clear to them that Saab wasn't going to be able to continue, they just shut down production. They wanted the SRX to make as many units as they could to sell them, so they just forgot about it. So they only made 814 Saab 9.4Xs. It was the end of the run for Saab. It is rarer than a Ferrari F40. It is rarer than a Carrera GT. Obviously not on a per mile basis. You do see 94Xs occasionally, but it's a very, very special and unusual vehicle. And it really was the end of the run for Saab. Um, you get in and it's, it looks, looks and feels a lot like a Cadillac SRX, which is largely what it was, but it was the very last Saab made for only one model year, only 800 units. Um, incredibly bizarre car. Okay, next one. Here's one of my very favorites. Another special car you would never notice in traffic. The 2008 to 2009 Saturn Astra. <laughs> I know this car well because I actually sold Saturns at a Saturn dealership when this car was new. And we had one or maybe two of these left on our lot and we couldn't get anyone to buy them because Saturn was so clearly going out of business and the recession was taking hold and it was bad. But they sold 18,500 Saturn Astras in the United States during the two model year run. By comparison, Ford was doing about 200,000 focuses a year at that time in the United States. So in those two model years, 08, 09, Ford did like maybe 400,000 focuses. Saturn only sold 18,500 Astra. So what was the Saturn Astra? It was the Opel Astra, the Vauxhall Astra, imported to the United States and rebranded as a Saturn, which was General Motors' like, you know, fun, cool, new, hip brand in the 90s. Well, by the 2000s, they didn't want to invest money in it anymore, so they were just bringing in European models and rebadging them and calling them Saturns. It was a nightmare. But the Astra was the entry-level car. I mean, you don't really see all that many of them left. You didn't see all that many of them at the time. It was not a common car, although it was generally 
generally agreed to be pretty fun to drive. It was a little sportier, a little more exciting than a lot of the compact cars at the time, but very rare and very unusual. Okay, next unusual car you might not notice you saw in traffic. This one you actually might notice, the 2006 to 2007 Subaru B9 Tribeca. So this was Subaru's first attempt at a mid-size three-row family SUV. Now, the Subaru Ascent is the current vehicle in that segment, and it's very popular and very reasonable, whatever. But the Tribeca, the B9 Tribeca, was Subaru's attempt at something new. First off, the naming, B9. Subaru was gonna rename all of its cars with a B and then a number corresponding to where they were in the lineup. They were gonna call the Impreza the B3 Impreza. And at the same time, they were gonna come out with this new grill that the B9 Tribeca had. It was this giant hole in the center and it was flanked by, it almost looked like wings on the side. It was very unusual. And they were gonna put this grill on all their cars. And in fact, it did go into the Impreza, this exact grill. Uh, in a smaller fashion. And that was gonna go on all the Subarus. And so you'd have like the B5 Legacy and the B9 Tribeca and the B3 Impreza to kind of figure out where they fall in the model range. But what ended up happening instead was the B9 Tribeca was a massive flop. People hated the grill. It was widely mocked in the car industry. Everybody laughed at it. It was a total joke. And so they changed it. They dropped the whole B thing. It didn't spread past the Tribeca. And they renamed it just the Subaru Tribeca beginning in the 08 model year and they changed the front end to be normal. And so Subaru quickly responded to the feedback and they got rid of it. And no one really realizes that Subaru was playing that B thing and that grill was gonna make its way onto all the cars. They skipped it all and they just normalized it. But for those two model years, it was 06 and 07, the B9 Tribeca was this heinously ugly midsize SUV, very, very strange vehicle. Now in those two years, they managed to sell around 30,000 units with the old front end or the old name. By comparison, the Subaru Ascent does 30,000 units in about five or six months. So two years with the old one, the new one does it in six months. But that was a very quirky car and you're driving on the street, you might not even realize you're next to this bizarre vehicle that was gonna take Subaru in a different direction and it was actually a total flop. Okay, final one, and maybe my very favorite car on this entire list is normal rare cars is the 2009 or 2012 Suzuki Equator. This was a very interesting pickup truck. Suzuki was desperate in the late 2000s to gain market share in the United States market. That was their goal. They wanted to be a player in the United States. And they realized at some point the best way to do that, they needed a truck. That's what American buyers want. So they went to Nissan and they said, hey, can we borrow your truck and badge it as a Suzuki? So they took the Nissan Frontier and they badged it as a Suzuki, the Suzuki Equator. Over the four years it was sold, 09 to 12, they only sold 8,200 Equators in the United States. By comparison, Nissan was selling about 80,000 Frontiers a year, and that design has gone on since 06. So they've probably sold about 1.2 million Frontier pickup trucks in that design and they sold 8,200 Suzuki Equators. So when you see a Nissan Frontier from this era, there is a 0.6% chance that you are actually looking at a Suzuki Equator. Maybe one out of every 200 that you see is a Suzuki Equator. And I think that's just absolutely hilarious. Obviously what ended up happening was the truck wasn't anywhere near popular enough because consumers realized it was just a rebadged Nissan. So why not just buy the Nissan? And then Suzuki went out of business in the United States. So it didn't really work clearly. 8,200 made, but it's a very unusual car. I do see them occasionally here in Southern California. It's a big mid-size truck market, and they're just, it's funny to see it every time. Do you take this thing to a Nissan dealer? Probably. <laughs> But that was another rare vehicle that you might not realize. So there you go. There are a few of my favorite rare vehicles you might not notice in traffic. I could make I could make 500 of these, this list. Um, you might be surprised if you really look around and you really know cars, what is rare when it's around you. But these cars, they don't get any love. They don't really deserve any love, but they are rare and special.